Hello guys, can you hear me? Good evening. Yes, so we'll wait for a few more minutes. Okay. Uh, for the spin and then we'll start. Okay. So five minutes we have. Semester exam or something, is it? Okay, when it is, Shraddha? Okay, day after. Which subject? Okay, chemistry. Where is chemistry, guys? What is the portion for that? Slippers for chemistry exam. Still chemical bonding, is it? Associates of matter is there. Atomic structure? Okay, thermodynamics is also there. Okay, got it. Got it, got it. Okay. So I think almost half of the uh, 11 grade chemistry is there. Yes, so everything in physical chemistry except the equilibrium chapter, right? Yeah. Anyway, not an issue. So guys, let's start with the session. Uh, I think last class, we, uh, we could not have the last class. Okay, so I'll plan to have a compulsory class for that. Okay, we'll, we'll do that. So last last class we stopped at hybridization, right? We discussed how the VBT valence bond theory could not explain the bonding of a CH4, right? And then I said that we got a new theory and that is hybridization. So today in the session we are going to start what is hybridization and how to find out hybridization, okay? Okay, so let's start this. Still, I think there are many more students trying. Okay, we'll wait, guys, two more minutes, okay? Because I can see there are only 28 participants till now. Okay, so I'll, let me drop a message.
Okay, fine. We'll start now. So we'll start with hybridization. So what is hybridization? Hybridization is the intermixing of orbitals. Okay. So first of all, you write down hybridization is the intermixing of orbitals. Intermixing of orbitals orbitals of same atom orbitals of same atom okay it is also the redistribution of energy redistribution of energy so what happens in this in some of the molecules before the bonding the atomic orbitals of one particular atom okay combines together and forms hybrid orbitals okay that's why we are saying it as intermixing of orbitals the orbitals intermix combines together okay they overlap combines together and forms a new set of orbitals this new set of orbitals is called hybrid orbitals and this entire phenomenon is hybridization right so by mixing of orbitals there is redistribution of energy right and intermixing of orbitals also the same thing okay so write down hybridization is the hybridization is the is the process of hybridization is the process of intermixing of atomic orbitals of the central atom i'll write down here it is the process of intermixing of orbitals of central atom central atom right down through hybridization the energy is redistributed the energy is redistributed and new orbitals formed orbital forms which is called which is called hybrid orbitals right it is called hybrid orbitals okay all hybrid orbitals have same shape or similar shape and energy all hybrid orbitals must have the same energy 
one more thing here the number of atomic orbitals combines the number of atomic orbitals combines equal number of equal number of hybrid orbital forms equal number of hybrid forms copy this down suppose two atomic orbitals combines so two hybrid orbital forms three then three hybrid orbitals four atomic orbitals then four hybrid orbitals and so on okay we have to discuss one more concept in this chapter that is molecular orbital theory right so there is a basic difference between molecular orbital and hybrid orbital hybrid orbital forms when when the orbitals of same atoms combines okay or intermix orbitals of same atom but in molecular orbital we have orbitals of different atom so that's the basic difference we have so this point did you copy this down all of you yes next slide down one side you write down orbital mixed the stable you draw this is hybrid orbital okay so what happens suppose when s and p orbital mix obviously of the same atom right forms two sp hybridized hybrid orbitals okay when s and 2p mix three atomic orbitals are mixing so we'll get three sp2 hybridized hybrid orbitals when x sorry s is mixed with 3p orbitals then we get four sp3 hybridized hybrid orbitals when x mix with 3p and 1d then the hybrid orbital forms number is 5 and the hybrid orbital is sp3 d if it is 1s 3p and 2d then the hybrid orbital forms are 6 sp3 d so this is the hybridization we have based on the number of atomic orbitals combines all of you copy this down don't leave this okay yes dsp2 is also possible that is square planar geometry in this chapter you don't you don't have use of that if you want to write you can write it down one d orbital right one s orbital and two p orbital this gives you 2 3 4 s p 2 hybridized hybrid orbital even d2 s p 3 is also possible right this kind of geometry and hybridization you will get in grade 12 when we study coordination compound done yeah okay so this is the thing now there are few characteristics of hybrid orbital you must remember okay few points i have given you already you can continue in this also uh next write down 
uh, I have given you already all hybrid orbitals must have the same energy, right? right? Next, write down like atomic orbitals, like atomic orbitals. Hybrid orbital can also accommodate maximum two electrons. Means in one hybrid orbitals, we can have maximum two electrons like we had in atomic orbitals. Now this point is very important, this one. Like hybrid orbitals, hybrid orbitals forms only sigma bond and may contain lone pair and may contain lone pair. If you remember in organic chemistry, right, we had discussed a bit of hybridization and I told you that we'll see this in chemical bonding chapter. If you look at this structure, and if I find out the hybridization of each carbon atom here, right, if you remember, I have told you that we just need to count, Achha, one more thing I'll do. Uh, Two, three, C double bond O, and H2. Okay, one lone pair on nitrogen. Ah, so if I have to find out the hybridization, this one I have done already in organic chemistry. If you remember, I told you that you just count the number of sigma bond and lone pair. Okay, like you see, for all these carbon atom, we have one one hydrogen attached, right? One hydrogen here, one hydrogen here. and there is no lone pair on these carbon atom. Could you tell me how many sigma bond we have here? This one we have done, right? How many sigma we have of this carbon atom? Could you tell me? How many sigma bond? Three sigma bond. Do we have any lone pair on the carbon atom? Do we have any lone pair on the carbon atom? No, right? That's why the hybridization is what? This carbon is sp2 hybridized because it's three sigma one. Have we done this kind of question in organic chemistry? If you remember? All please respond, we have done this, right? So here you can understand the reason that why we are counting only sigma bond and lone pair. Okay, uh, yeah, you can understand the reason here why we are counting only sigma bond and lone pair. So reason is what? Because the hybrid orbital that forms, this hybrid orbital forms only sigma bond. It can never form pi bond here and it may contain lone pair. This is the property of hybrid orbital, okay? We'll discuss uh, more examples into this one, but for just for this reference, if I ask you to count to find out the hybridization of each carbon atom here, all the carbon atom in the ring is sp2 hybridized, yes or no? Is sp2. This carbon is also sp2 hybridized okay if you look at this carbon this carbon is sp3 this carbon is sp2 because we have three sigma bond this carbon has three sigma bond sp2 this carbon has three sigma bond sp2 this nitrogen has three sigma bond and one lone pair so it is sp3 any doubt in this you can tell me all of you any doubt in this Right, so we haven't done anything new over here. 
we have already discussed all these things okay the example just i have given you here so that we can understand that why we were counting only sigma bond and lone pair if the structure is given in order to find out the hybridization of each atom okay remember it is hybridization for one atom is this carbon atom or this carbon atom or this carbon atom hybridization is not defined for molecule okay keep that in mind okay now the next uh, you know uh, property here you write down if there are if there are pi bonds to be formed to be formed then equal number of atomic orbitals atomic orbitals must be left must be left unhybridized okay next one is the last one geometry of the molecule molecule can be determined can be determined by knowing the hybridization it's very simple to find out hybridization but if you want to understand the actual thing you have to give a little bit of time here okay i can you know finish this hybridization in 2 minutes 2 more minutes i'll be able to finish this okay but i'm not giving you just a small short trick we have here which we use in solving questions but i want you to understand the actual concept and then we'll see the trick okay the so first we'll discuss the actual concept see here what happens according to the hybridization we can find out the geometry if hybridization is sp geometry is linear if hybridization is sp2 geometry is trigonal trigonal planar sp3 geometry is tetrahedral right sp3 d then the geometry is trigonal bipyramidal tbp sp3d2 geometry is octahedral and octahedral is nothing but same as square bipyramid okay now you see the shape of the hybrid orbital you don't have to you know memorize this but just if s and p combines or if p and p also combines atomic orbitals the hybrid orbital that we get is this one this is the hybrid orbitals we get when the atomic orbitals combines yeah pentagonal bipyramidal if you ask me 
it is sp3 d3 the geometry is pentagonal bipyramidal not very important but you will get there in this sp3 d3 okay so this is hybrid orbitals and these are atomic orbitals of same atom obviously atomic orbitals of same atom okay now we'll try to understand how this hybridization explains the geometry sorry the bonding of ch4 because because of that only we had this we have this particular theory of hybridization geometry of dsp2 is square planar ruchita dsp2 geometry if you want to write down dsp2 is a square planar okay you won't get this uh, particular thing in this particular chapter but yes if you want to write you can write it down dsp2 is a square planar okay now look at this example of ch4 because of this only we got this new concept right uh, of hybridization ch4 molecule you see carbon has six electron and when you draw the electronic configuration 1s2 2s2 2p2 if you look at this orbital diagram 2s orbital has two electron and 2p also has two electron okay so two electron here and one here one this is the distribution of energy in ground state this is in ground state but since uh, this carbon is attached with four hydrogen atom it means we must require four unpaired electron so in order to get four unpaired electron this two electron of uh, this orbital it jumps into the vacant orbital of p and we get here one electron and three electrons we get here one two and three okay now this has one s orbital and three p orbital here right before it make a bond with hydrogen this four orbitals 1s and 3p goes under hybridization all these four atomic orbitals mix together and forms a new set of orbitals so how many orbitals we get here could you tell me how many orbitals we get here four yes because four atomic orbitals combines so we'll get four uh, hybrid orbitals each hybrid orbitals has one one electron because here also we had one one electron present okay so this is sp3 hybridized hybrid orbitals then what happens the four s orbital of hydrogen takes make a bond with this sp3 hybridized orbital and and we get the ch4 molecule so if you look at this structure here we have four sp3 hybridized orbital so the structure is this sp hybridized orbital is this 1 2 3 and 4 right four sp3 hybridized orbital of uh this thing a uh, carbon which has one one electron each as it is written here one one electron each now with this one one electron the s orbital of the s orbital of uh hydrogen overlaps and makes a bond right 
this is the s orbital of hydrogen all these are s orbitals 1 2 3 this is again this is hydrogen this is hydrogen this is hydrogen and this is hydrogen s orbital what is this overlap could you tell me this overlap is sp3 s overlap and in fact we have four such overlaps possible present here right everywhere we have sp3 s overlap okay and that is how the bond forms in ch4 molecule so what happens here you see these four bonds are formed by the overlapping of sp3 and s orbitals hence all four bonds are identical and same and that is how it explains the property of ch4 and hybridization of ch4 did you get it no doubt so this is the theory of hybridization now if you look at this one more example all of you have done that suppose we have becl2 hybridization we need to find out okay so beryllium it is 1s2 2s2 right and the 2p orbital is vacant here there is no electron present in this 2p so if i draw the diagram here this is 2s and this is 2p okay 2s has two electron and there is no electron in 2p but it has to bond with two chlorine atom means two unpaired electron for beryllium is required so in excited state what happens one of the electron from 2s of beryllium it jumps into 2p and in excited state the structure is this 2s has one electron and 2p has only okay now before bonding with chlorine this s and this p orbital which has unpaired electron this two intermix and forms a new set of orbitals which we call it as hybrid orbitals this one right and these two orbitals will be left unhybridized okay 2p orbitals right down here 2p orbitals two p orbitals are left unhybridized unhybridized and these two orbitals the hybrid orbitals sp because sp and s s and p combines has one one electron each as it was here now when you draw the structure of this obviously becl2 the hybrid orbital is this and chlorine the electron is present this one has one electron this one has one electron and the chlorine the electron is present in p subshell so p subshell is this for chlorine p orbital in fact is this for chlorine which has one electron each okay So this overlaps here and forms a bond along this line so it's a sigma bond right this sigma overlap and this sigma overlap okay so hybridization for b is this sp in this molecule
Yeah, if possible, then they can form pi bonds properly. Here it is not forming, but in other cases, if it is possible to form, then they will form pi bonds. Tell me, did you get it, all of you? Okay, now we'll take one more example. You will have a better clarity of this. Let's take an example of CO2 molecule. Could you tell me the hybridization of carbon in this? Okay. Okay, Prakul, I got your answer. Others, tell me the answer. No, Gayatri, that's not correct. Rohan, that's not correct. No, Stuti, it's not correct. Is it done in the class, like school class? Yes, Prakul, right. Ruchita, that's correct. Yes, Rohan, that's correct. See, it's very simple. Carbon has six electron. So it is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Two electron, two s, and one electron, one electron here. But in excited state, what happens? One electron from two s, it jumps into two p. And we get four unpaired electrons. So this one is ground state and this is excited state, okay? You know the structure of CO2? The structure of CO2 is O double bond, C double bond, O. So if somebody asks you, what is the hybridization of CO2? You can draw the structure and you can find the number of sigma bond and lone pair from the central atom. That is only one sigma here and one sigma here, two sigma and zero pi. So it is sp hybridized carbon atom we have. That is what you can say directly, right? But why I have drawn this structure? Because there are two pi bonds, yes or no? Can hybrid orbital forms pi bond? No, right? But the central atom carbon has two pi bonds. Okay, it means out of this four orbitals here, one, two, three, four of carbon, out of this four orbitals, two orbitals must be left unhybridized. Right, in order to form a pi bond. So what we say that this S and this P in one P goes under hybridization and it forms electron and the two atomic orbital is this. So this one here you see these are the hybrid orbitals right hybrid orbitals and these two are the atomic orbitals. Atomic orbitals. 
right? So two pi bond we need to form here. The two atomic orbitals must be there unhybridized for the carbon atom. Now we'll draw the orbital diagram. But before that, we'll see the electronic configuration of oxygen also. It has eight electron, one s two, two s two, and two p four. One s two, two s two, two p four. Two s is two electron, and two p four has four electron. So one, two, three, and four. So what point I'm trying to make is for oxygen there are two atomic orbitals which has one one electron. That is what you need to keep in mind. Okay, this is two s. He also two s. He also two p. This is also two s. Two s, and this is two p. Okay, so two s and two p orbital have two electrons unpaired for oxygen atom. This is for carbon. Now let us draw the orbital diagram. For carbon, there are two sp hybridized carbon atom, right? See here, sp hybridized carbon atom here and two atomic orbitals with unpaired, one unpaired electron. Look at this. Wait, this is sp hybridized carbon atom. Of carbon, it has two p orbital also atomic orbital. So one of the atomic orbital is this. Right, and other atomic orbital is this. Okay. This is for carbon. All these orbitals has one one electron. So here we have one. Here we have one. Here we have one, and here we have one. Okay. Now oxygen has two p orbitals, which has one one electron each. So one of the p orbital is this. And another p orbital is this, for example, right? One p orbital is this. The another one is this for one oxygen atom, and this is the another one for another oxygen atom, right? So this p orbital has one electron. This p orbital is one electron, right? So all these orbitals has equal electron. Equal electron like this forms sigma here. Now, when this forms here, one electron this side, one electron this side. When this forms a pi bond between, we have a sigma bond here and this atomic orbital. These are, if you look at the hybridization here, sp and p overlap. We have this side to form a sigma bond. Sp and p overlap to form a sigma bond. Now, to form a pi bond between carbon and oxygen. This two elect orbitals overlaps, right? It forms a pi bond. This two overlaps, and here also, here also, these two orbitals overlaps, and these two orbitals also overlaps, right? So what happens here? You see, this middle one, this middle one is carbon. This is oxygen with a single bond. This is a single bond we have, and we have a double bond here, which is this. This carbon has a single bond this side, and a double bond here. Like this. So this is the structure. And for oxygen, you see it has two lone pair here. If you look at this, this 2s and 2p electrons. Are the lone pair on oxygen atom, and that you can place here. Did you understand this? You see the pi or bond that is forming here. 
it is because of the overlap of atomic orbitals not the hybrid orbitals Can show I have started this thing of uh, hybridization. Okay, till now you have to watch the video. You won't understand it now, right? But what I am going to discuss after this that you will understand. Guys, anyone has doubt in this? How sigma and pi bonds are formed? Please respond, all of you guys, quickly. Okay. Now the other thing is what you see this kind of question if you're going to solve the, in the exam, okay, this type, then it takes a lot of time, right? You have to draw a lot of a structure, and it takes a lot of time. So in the exam, we won't do questions like this, especially in the Kamon test or any competitive exam. If they ask you to find out the hybridization, they will either give you the structure like I've given you the first one. Okay, benzene ring and other things are there like that or they will give you the molecule which we have here right so if a structure is given fine you can count the number of lone pair and a sigma bond right but if molecule is given like this co2 and other molecules are there then you have to uh, you know draw the orbital diagram like this and then you see which orbitals are taking part in the reaction which are not taking part in the reaction and then you can choose the, uh, you know, the orbitals which goes into overlaps, intermixing, and forms hybrid orbital. This is what you need to do. Actual method is this by which you can find out the hybridization. But like I said, this we won't follow in the test, right? Then what we should do? We are going to use the steric number rule in order to find out the hybridization. Okay, you see this. What is a steric number rule? It is a trick basically. Steric number rule. What is a steric number? Steric number is equals to what? In VSEPR I have discussed. What is steric number? It is a sum of bond pair plus lone pair. Yes or no? Some of bond pair and lone pair? How to find out bond pair and lone pair? We, we calculate the valence electron. We'll divide it by 8. The quotient gives you bond pair and the remainder gives you number of electrons in, in the lone pair. Right? That's why this is equals to this is equals to Q plus R by 2. The same thing we have done in VS EPR if you remember that. Yes. Right. Now based on the steric number, you can say the hybridization of the molecule. Best method is this. Steric number and hybridization. So if the steric number is uh, Two, hybridization is sp if it is 3 it is sp2 if it is 4 then it is sp3 if it is 5 then it is sp3d 6 sp3d2 this is the hybridization.
clear understood this all of you have copied right so if in the question in the kemon test they'll ask you to find out hybridization we are going to use this method steric number but actual concept is this orbital overlap you need to check and then you can find out the uh, the number of orbitals that take parts in the hybridization and then we can say the hybridization right so steric number rule we are going to use find out the hybridization of mm hybridization of I three minus NO three minus X three O two F two CL F three also you can write I O two F two minus try all these. Tell me the hybridization and geometry. Then all of you. Okay. So for I three minus, you see, we'll find out valence electron, and valence electron is twenty two, seven into three plus one because one negative charge. Now, if you divide this twenty two by eight, so we have two bond pair and the lone pair. So the steric number is five. Hybridization is sp three d. Geometry is what? Geometry is tpp. Yes. Shape is linear. Okay, Vitu. Shape is linear. Geometry is tpp. No three minus valence electron. Is it twenty four? Yeah. So then twenty four divided by eight. So we have three bond pair and zero lone pair. So it is three sp three d. Sorry, it is three. So it is sp two. Geometry is trigonal planar. Yes, geometry is trigonal planar. Next, X E O two F two. Where is electron is? Is it thirty four? 
So 34 by 8 gives you four bond pair and two lone pair. Sorry, one lone pair. 32 and yeah, one lone pair. And then we have five steric number. It is SP3D. Okay, TVP. The geometry here. This one is valence electron is 28. 28 divided by 8 is 3 BP and 2 LP. 5 SP3D. For this one, uh, 34, right? So 34 divided by 8 is 4 BP and 1 LP, 5 SP3. Any doubt in this? Yes, Brigitte, one second. Okay. Rujita, do you have the notes for VSEPR? Have you written that table? Right? I want you to go back and look at this combination. For electron pair 5, this combination 2 and 3. What is the shape over there? Yeah, 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 same only. Means with this particular thing, you can find out hybridization, you can find out geometry, you can find out shape. So everything, VSEPR, hybridization, VBT, it ends up over here. Any given molecule, if you have, okay, find out valence electron, divided by eight, you'll get bond pair and lone pair. That gives you the steric number, right? With the steric number, you can write down hybridization. Hybridization has a unique geometry, right? Depending upon the bond pair and lone pair, you have the idea of shape of the molecule also. Second one, NO3 minus it is. So nitrogen has five electron. Oxygen has six, right? Six into three, 18 plus five. 23 and since negative charge is there, so 23 plus 1, 24. 24 divided by 8 is 3 bond pair and 0 lone pair. The steric number is 3, hybridization sp2. Yes, Prakul, understood. No, valence electron we need to take, so it should be 5. Any doubt guys in this? Are you finding it difficult or easy? Or moderate? Okay. Yeah, these are not much tough. Okay. Once you practice a bit more, you will have the you know idea of it, how to do it. Okay. Now after this, what happens? If you look at the sorry, if you look at the structure for oxygen molecule, oxygen molecule in VBT also, we have discussed this that we have OO double bond and two lone pair on each oxygen atom. This is the structure of O2. So this is structure of O2 according to the valence bond theory. It suggests that oxygen molecule is diamagnetic in nature. Because all electrons are paired. Okay, when all electrons are paired, 
the molecule is said to be diamagnetic in nature right but experimentally this observation was wrong okay experimentally it has been observed that oxygen molecule is paramagnetic okay so this thing was found out to be wrong it's not correct actual thing is what oxygen molecule is paramagnetic in nature this is correct One second, guys. Just Okay, so paramagnetic, right? So experimentally, this is found to be paramagnetic in nature, and uh, you know, but we would suggest that O two is diamagnetic. So again, there is a drawback in this theory, right? Because valence bond theory, yeah, once again, once again, three body, right? Valence bond theory suggests. See, uh, first of all, paramagnetic and diamagnetic. It is just a property of a molecule. okay uh you know paramagnetic molecules are those molecules which has unpaired electron okay which has unpaired electron for example if i write down no2 how many electrons this has 23 odd number of electrons it must has one one unpaired electron only so when unpaired electron present the molecule is said to be paramagnetic when all electrons are paired for example h2 h2 you see there are only two electrons and these electrons are paired right okay it's paired so it is diamagnetic molecule this is what the simple definition of paramagnetic and diamagnetic molecule property is what paramagnetic molecule has unpaired electron and when it is placed in the magnetic field it is weakly attracted towards the magnetic field okay so it experiences some force in presence of magnetic field or electric field force can be of attractive in nature or repulsive in nature right but if the molecule is diamagnetic correct then the molecule is diamagnetic then uh, there is no effect on this whether you place this in magnetic field or in electric field it won't experience any force it won't get deflected from its path okay so this is what the definition of paramagnetic and diamagnetic molecule is so what happens according to vbt oxygen molecule is said to be is observed to be diamagnetic but experimentally it has been proved that it is not diamagnetic it is paramagnetic because in presence of magnetic field it get attracted towards the magnetic field are you understanding this yes correct so obviously again this is the drawback or the flaw in vbd valence bond theory now we, to explain the magnetic property of oxygen we got a new theory and that we call it as molecular orbital theory okay so heading all of you write down you should know why we have why we need this particular theory you should know why we need the theory of hybridization okay so there was some drawback in vbt which explains which gives us hybridization and again this molecular orbital molecular orbital theory did you understand yes this uh, the background of it did you understand why we need this theory 
yeah okay now we see what is molecular orbital theory and how molecular orbital theory explains the magnetic behavior of oxygen okay so what is molecular orbital theory first of all you see uh, like in hybridization atomic orbital combines and forms and forms hybrid orbital so here also in molecular orbital theory molecular orbitals of atoms combines and forms molecular orbital so let me write down these two points then probably you will understand then what what is the difference in the two things one basic difference we have here write down atomic orbitals when i say atomic orbitals orbitals combines and it forms hybrid orbital hybrid orbital again if i write down atomic orbitals orbital combines and it forms molecular orbital okay then you'll ask me sir what is the difference in the two both you are saying atomic orbital combines and forms this. then what is the difference between molecular orbital and hybrid orbital yes okay so the basic difference is what when hybrid orbital forms then the or atomic orbital must belongs to the same atom this atomic orbitals when it forms hybrid orbitals this atomic orbitals belongs to the same atom but when molecular orbital forms atomic orbitals of different atoms combines are you getting me yes now you look and now you go look, you go back and see this the examples of ch4 i have discussed once again yeah the examples of ch4 i have discussed you see this we cl2 ch4 i right? right this what i said this four orbitals goes under hybridization right all these four orbitals of carbon we don't have here orbitals of hydrogen is it yes no the atomic orbitals of carbons carbon combines and forms hybrid orbital okay so only one atom is involved in this if you look at this one b cl2 the atomic orbitals of beryllium combines and forms hybrid orbital okay another one atomic orbitals of carbon you see this carbon ka uh, orbital right so atomic orbitals of carbons combines and forms hybrid orbital no you see we have here for no hybrid orbitals is the is forms when different orbitals of same elements combines you see this that's what i'm telling you sir different orbitals of same atoms combines forms hybrid orbital molecular orbital when we have diff orbitals of different atoms involved understood right so all these examples that i have given you you can easily understand that the atomic orbitals of same orbitals takes part and it forms hybrid orbitals a uh, different atoms of same elements you can take you can talk about isotopes here right rarely it's we cannot say it's not possible right like it's possible right yes sir the got it understood okay so first point is the difference between molecular orbital and hybrid orbital is in molecular orbital we have different atoms involved in this 
right now two three points to write down and then i'll see the, i'll discuss the other things here write down the first point next year in a molecule electrons are considered electrons are considered to be associated with in a molecule electrons are considered to be associated with all the nuclei in the molecule all the nuclei in the molecule next write down as electron in atoms as electron in atoms occupy atomic orbitals similarly electrons in molecules similarly electrons in molecules yeah as electrons in atoms occupy atomic orbitals similarly electron electrons in molecules electron in molecules are present in molecular orbitals right so the basic difference you must uh, uh, take care of other things are very much similar to that of hybrid orbitals okay like the next point you write down the number of molecular orbitals formed the number of molecular orbital forms equals to the number of atomic orbital combines right the number of molecular orbitals forms equals to the number of atomic orbital combines next like atomic orbitals like atomic orbitals like atomic orbitals molecular orbitals can also occupy sorry molecular orbital orbitals can also accommodate two electrons maximum of two electrons right molecular orbitals can also accommodate maximum of two electrons so so we are talking about the combination of atomic orbitals so there are two different way for combining of atomic orbitals so what i'll write down here molecular orbitals write down molecular orbitals forms forms by two different ways the first one is linear combination
of atomic linear combination of atomic orbital and the second one is united atom method in this two this is not in our syllabus only we have to study linear combination of atomic okay now linear combination of atomic orbital is what adding right down linear combination of atomic orbital according to this what happens when two atoms combines when two atom combines forms a molecules these atoms combines in two different ways one possibility is what either they'll have the same phase Psi a and psi b are the wave function of a and b, and psi a b is the wave function of a b. Right? So a and b atoms either they will have same phase or opposite phase, same or opposite phase. we are talking about the uh, combination of orbitals of two different atoms right orbitals are nothing but the path of electrons so it must have some wave characteristics that's why we are talking about wave function here this part is not important they won't ask you any questions on this in j also okay but since it is there we are just discussing it you have to keep in mind when a and b combines with the same phase okay then the molecular orbital that forms we call it as bonding molecular orbital when the phases are same bonding molecular orbital in short we write it as bmo when the phases are opposite different then it is anti bonding anti bonding molecular orbital that is abm right there is a formula we have of this combination psi ab is given as n is the normalizing factor ca is a constant psi a plus cb into psi b just write it down you won't get any questions on this okay it is there in the linear combination of atomic orbital not much important n is the normalizing factor n is the normalizing factor it just you know ensures that the probability of finding an electron in the universe is one right normalizing factor c a and c b are the factors to minimize energy c a and c b are the factors to minimize energy Okay, 
So next slide down, one note here. Yes, normalizing factors is the you know factor which in, which ensures that the probability of finding an electron in the universe is one. Okay, that is normalizing factor. C A and C B are the factors to minimize energy. C A and C B are the factors to minimize energy. Okay. Yeah. Now you see this how this uh, molecular orbital forms in different combinations. Okay. Shape I am giving you here. Okay. Just write it down. Hardly you will get questions on this. I have seen only one questions on the shape. That's why I am giving you. But not much important. When you have SS combination, like I said, there are two possible combination. One is same phase. Other one is opposite phase. Suppose we have two s orbital. Okay, this combines with this. And both has the same phase, plus minus here, plus combines with plus and minus. Okay, so this is when same phase combines, this forms BMO bonding molecular orbital, which has a shape like this, elliptical we can say, where we have positive charge here, slightly negative charge here, negative charge here, sigma. It is sigma bonded forms because along the internuclear axis, the combination is taking place. Right along this axis. Similarly, if this is plus, this is minus, combines with minus and plus, then it forms anti bonding ABM. ABMO the shape is this here we have minus here we have plus and in between these two we'll have a nodal plane important one is for PP combination. I'll do that. Just to finish it first. Do you have any exam on Saturday? No, no, it's not static. The charges are not static, Prabhu. That's why there is you no know, no repulsion. It is it continuously moves, and it is not the charge first of all. Okay, these are the phases of the orbital. Plus and minus are not the charge here. Take care of that. Okay, no problem, Shraddha. We'll discuss that later. Let it be. Let it be. We'll discuss that later. Anyways, um, okay, Friday then the class is not possible. Let it be. Okay. If you have PP combination, on PP combination, they have asked one question that I have seen. That's why I'm giving. You just need to know the shape here. Three possibility we have because we have three orbitals here. This combines with this. Right. 
plus combines with plus and it gives bonding molecular orbital which is this minus minus plus and this is bmo along the internuclear inter axis sigma bmo bonding molecular orbital but again if you have this one minus plus minus plus then it is a nodal plane will have here acha this is sigma only no wait the sigma so it will be like this this is minus this is plus and this is also minus and this is plus okay it is abm if you have pi combination here plus plus minus minus same same phase plus combines with plus so we will have this and we have electron cloud like this negative side okay this is bmo again because plus combines with plus when plus combines with negative Okay, plus minus minus plus. This is the nodal plane. Only one kind of question is possible in this structure: that which of this combination gives sigma molecular orbital or pi molecular orbital? One is this. Other type: which of this combination gives bonding molecular orbital or gives anti-bonding molecular? that is it you just need to know the shape here see one more thing here when it is bonding molecular orbital right bonding molecular orbital is represented by sigma and when the it is anti bonding then it is sigma star I means this star represents anti bonding star when there is no star it is bonding okay why sigma because it is along the internuclear axis right that is why it is sigma so sigma is bmo sigma star is abm anti bonding okay here also the similar thing here this one is sigma bmo this one is again along the internuclear axis abmo is sigma star right this is pi because internuclear axis is this So it is pi BMO, but this one is pi star anti BMO. Then all of you. Okay. Now to conclude this, what we can write that when the atomic orbitals of two atoms combines, they combines in both way. We cannot neglect the possibility of any one. Okay. Atomic orbitals combines. 
in both ways means either they will form bonding molecular orbital or they will form means they will form both bonding plus anti bonding molecular orbital we cannot ignore the possibility of forming any one of the kind of orbitals right both orbital forms right because the phase can be same or can be different also so if suppose we have 1s combines with 1s look at this if 1s orbital combines with 1s so s always gives you sigma so we'll get sigma 1s and we get anti bonding also sigma star 1s star means anti bonding if 2s combines with 2s we again get sigma 2s plus sigma star 2s anti bonding if it is 2px 2pz i'll take first 2pz combines with 2pz it is uh sigma 2pz plus sigma star 2pz okay then we have 2px plus 2py one of the p orbitals already form sigma this will form pi okay, 2px 2px from pi so pi 2px and pi star 2px if you have 2pz and 2pz then it is pi 2pz plus pi star 2p c right this form sigma we usually can anyone you can consider as sigma x and y also you can consider as sigma yes that's what i'm talking about prakul okay any one you can consider as sigma i'm sorry the last one is y wait this is y one second prakul okay so any one you can consider as uh, you know pi and others are sigma and others are pi generally we consider internucleate axis along z axis that's why i have consider pz forms sigma here right prakul this is just a assumption we have okay but if you write suppose pi to um, pi 2pz plus pi star 2pz you won't get the wrong answer okay it is the assumption that the internuclear axis is, is along z axis that's why the pz orbital forms sigma bond right usually what happens the energy of bonding molecular orbital is lesser than the energy of anti bonding molecular right so obviously you see if the orbital combines and forms all these orbitals right all these orbitals in the molecule we have all these orbitals present now when you distribute the electron in the orbitals like we do in electronic configuration similarly here also you can distribute the electrons of the molecules in the molecular orbital so since we have all these orbitals present so here also we'll distribute the electrons according to the energy of the molecular orbital right so we always start with bonding molecular orbital and then we'll goes to anti bonding molecular orbital the energy order is experimental that you should memorize okay but in general what we say that when you have a uh, this thing the energy profile if you see for bonding and anti bonding suppose this is the energy axis we have y axis and suppose 1s combines with 1s so 1s when combines with 1s it forms abmo and this also forms bmo right since bmo has lower energy so i'll write down bmo down and abmo up similarly you can also write down 2s combines with 2s so it forms abmo
BMO and other orbitals also you can write. Okay, so this is the energy profile we have. Like I said, the orbitals forms both antibonding and bonding. So you should know the overall energy of the orbital, the order you should know. And based on that, you can distribute the electron from low to high energy. Okay. So if there are two possibility here, if the total number of electrons equals to n, so case one, when n is less than equal to 14, 14 electrons, less than equal to 14 electrons. Then this energy order you should know, orbital energy order. And you will get questions from this only. The one that I am discussing now. This is only the most important part we have here. Other parts are there, that's why we have discussed, but not important. Okay. So what is the energy order you see? Sigma 1s is minimum. Then we have sigma star 1s. Then we have sigma 2s. Sigma star 2s. After this, we have pi 2py, pi 2py, then we have pi 2px, sigma 2pz, sigma 2pz, and then we have pi star 2py, pi star 2px, sigma star 2pz. This is the orbital energy order. This orbital, which I have written like this, are degenerate orbitals. This two and this two. Means equal energy orbitals. And when you distribute electrons in this, you have to follow Hunt's rule. While distributing the electron, you have to follow Hunt's rule. Is that fine? Then guys, yeah, wait, wait. No, N2 is this only, less than or equal to 14, no. Nitrogen has 14 electrons, so for N2, this is the order we have. The second case we have for distribution of electron when the number of electron n is greater than 40 but less than or equal to 20 in this case. Only one change you have to do here. Sigma 1s is minimum. 
सिग्मा स्टार वन एस सिग्मा टू एस सिग्मा स्टार टू एस देन वी हैव सिग्मा टू पी जी पाई टू पी वाई पाई टू पी एक्स देन वी हैव पाई स्टार टू पी वाई पाई स्टार टू पी एक्स देन सिग्मा स्टार टू पी जी ओके दिस इज़ द ऑर्डर मेंस दिस पोजीशन वी हैव इंटरचेंज दैट इज़ इट here also we have same thing these two are degenerate these two are degenerate equal energy orbital right we follow hans rule here also okay based on this first of all we'll try to find out the magnetic property of oxygen o2 molecule because that is why we have this you know the entire thing that is molecular orbital theory it has 16 electron so when you distribute 2 4 and write down separately this one okay 6 8 10 11 12 hans rule right first one one electron and then pairing 11 12 then we have 13 14 15 and 16 you see since we have unpaired electron present in the orbital that's why oxygen is paramagnetic this two unpaired electron paramagnetic with two unpaired electron understood Okay, that is how the magnetic behavior of oxygen has been explained. Okay, now the next thing, and all these things are important. Okay, for exam point of view, we can also calculate the bond order with respect to the molecule with the help of the molecular orbital theory. Okay, by the way, what is bond order? How do we define it? What is bond order? I have done this. Tell me, guys. it is a number of number of bond between the two atoms in a molecule okay that is how we define number of bonds it is always for the two atoms in a molecule it is not for the entire molecule number of bonds present between the two atom in a molecule so molecular orbital theory is not valid for more than 20 okay it is not given there okay now if i take this molecule which is ch3 ch double bond 
CH, single bond CH. Suppose this is carbon. Suppose this is the first carbon, the second, third, and fourth. If I ask you, what is the bond order of C1, C2 carbon? What is your answer? Bond order of C1, C2. One, because there is only one bond present. C2, C3, two, and C3, C4, it is again one, right? So why this is one? Because the number of bonds are one between the two carbon atoms. The first point is bond order we define between the two atoms in a molecule, okay? I have also told you that this bond order may have the fractional value, right? This may have fractional value when resonance is possible, right? Fractional value. What I said, we can find out bond order with respect to the molecular orbital theory, okay? Let's see this. What is the bond order of nitrogen molecule, an N bond in nitrogen molecule? Tell me the bond order. Is it three? Yes, three. Could you cross verify? We can also cross verify this with molecular orbital theory. With the help of molecular orbital theory, we can find out bond order with this formula. The bond order for, uh, you know, for this molecular orbital theory is number of electrons in BMO, bonding molecular orbital, minus number of electrons in ABMO anti-bonding molecular orbital and this is divided by divided by this is the formula we have for bond order according to molecular bonding sorry molecular orbital theory. Now what I want I want you to use this formula and find out the bond order of N2 nitrogen molecule. How many electrons nitrogen has? The number of electrons for nitrogen? Equals to? No, it's 14. How it is 28 or 7? Seven? 7 electrons in one nitrogen atom. 7 electrons in one nitrogen atom. 14 is atomic mass, right? So 14 is the total number of electrons for nitrogen. Follow the order of orbitals given. It is the first order it follows, okay? And then find out bond order. What you are getting? Are you getting it three? Yes, it should be three, right? So I'll write down the order here. The order is sigma 1s, sigma 2s, sorry. Sigma 1s, sigma star 1s, then sigma 2s, sigma star 2s, pi 2p, uh, x, pi 2p y, sigma 2p z, then pi star, 2p y, pi star 2p x, sigma star 2p z. If it is more than 14, then this two you need to interchange. That is it. It has 14 electrons. So if I distribute 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14. Okay. So bond order is the number of electrons in bonding molecular orbital, which is this, that is six plus four, 10 minus four by two, that is three. Okay.
that's why the bond order is three. You can find out the bond order of hydrogen also. What you are getting for bond order of hydrogen? There's two electrons. So it is simply sigma one s two, and there is no electron, right? So bond order is equals to two minus zero by two. That is one. What is the bond order you are getting for H e two? It has four electrons. Then we have sigma one s two, sigma star one s two. So bond order is what? 2 minus 2 by 2, that is 0. 0 means what? There is no bond present. Right. 0 means what? Bond order is nothing but the number of bonds. So when the number of bonds is 0, then there is no bond between the helium atom. That's why you see helium is exists as helium atom only. It does not form He2 like hydrogen. This is not possible. Are you getting it, guys? This is not possible. We can conclude this, it does not exist. Because there is no bond, it does not exist. Right? So the molecule for which the bond order is zero, right? Then the molecule does not exist. Yes, yes, can say that. We can generalize this, if the bond order is zero, then the molecule does not exist. Correct, Arshit. Okay. Even on this, they have asked question in the exam. They'll give you four options and they'll ask you which one of these molecules does not exist. Okay. To find out bond order, if it is coming out to be zero, that is your answer. Any doubt till here? All of you, please respond. Is it clear? The point is first 10 minutes, whatever we discussed in molecular orbital theory, okay, is not important. But when we start discussing this, the energy order, sigma 1 is sigma star 1 is and all. And then this bond order, mostly 99% of the cases, the last question from this portion. Of okay, must take care of that. Now, one more relation you see here. We know this relation we have discussed last class, last to last class, that bond order is directly proportional to bond strength. And, also, and it is inversely proportional to bond length. So once you know bond order, right, you can also compare bond strength and bond length. Clear? One very important question, and most probably you're going to have this question in your school exam. And the question is compare the bond order, bond strength, and bond length of, of O2, 2 minus, O2 minus, O2 and O2 plus, for these four molecules of iron.
ओके या सो आई डू दिस फॉर फर्स्ट वन सी ओ टू टू माइनस हैज एटीन इलेक्ट्रॉन्स ऑर्डर इज सिग्मा वन एस सिग्मा स्टार वन एस सिग्मा टू एस सिग्मा स्टार टू एस सिग्मा टू पी जी फाइव टू पी एक्स फाइव टू पी वाई फाइव स्टार टू पी एक्स फाइव स्टार टू पी वाई and sigma star 2 pc we have 18 electrons 2 4 6 8 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 and 18 so bond order for o2 2 minus is all these are bonding molecular orbital right one Then two, three, four, right? Three, four, and five. Five into two. We have ten electrons in bonding molecular orbital minus two, four, and four eight divided by two. That is one. Bond order is one. For O two, two minus. Okay. now similarly you can do if it is o2 minus means it has one electron less right it means it has 17 electrons so one electron that comes out from the anti bonding orbital right then it would be 10 minus 7 divided by 2 that is 1.5 again we have o2 it has 16 electrons so bond order is 16 electrons bond order is we have 10 minus 6 divided by 2 that is 2 and o2 plus has 15 electrons so bond order is 10 minus 5 divided by 2 that is 2.5 okay so if i write down the order which this question they have asked many times in neat and others exam Okay, so this is important here. So if I write down the order of bond order here, we have O two two minus O two minus O two and then O two plus. If I go left to right. these three things if i go left to right o2 2 plus the bond order increases bond order increases means bond strength also increases bond strength increases means bond length decreases and hence the bond length increases from o2 plus to o2 This is the order we have to Yes, O two two plus is fourteen electron. 
So we'll consider the first one. Right, so this example is very important, the oxygen line example. Many times they have asked this question in the exam, in school exam also, in competitive exam also. Okay, you must take care of all the three properties here. And when the, when the, when the bond order is zero, then the molecule does not exist. That is also very important. Okay, so this is it for molecular orbital theory. Any doubt in this? Any specific doubt? Okay. Next slide down. What other types of molecule? NO2 we'll discuss in the last. It's a odd electron molecule. We'll discuss in the last. Wait. This is the two types of bond we have, uh, like uh, you know, uh, three cent three electron bond and one electron bond. Odd electron molecule. We have just two three examples. We'll discuss in the last. Let it be just now. Okay. Now the next type of bonding we have. We call it as hydrogen bonding. Write down, it is It is the electrostatic force of attraction It is the electrostatic force of attraction It is the electrostatic force of attraction between the hydrogen between the hydrogen or between hydrogen comma attached to a more electronegative elements between hydrogen attached to more electronegative element like like fluorine nitrogen oxygen etc yeah I'll repeat me. it is the electrostatic force of attraction electrostatic force of attraction between hydrogen between hydrogen comma attached to more electronegative elements such as oxygen, nitrogen, fluorine, etc. and the another electronegative element. Done. Did you write this? Okay. Now, what do you mean by this? First of all, you see this example. Um, what I said, when hydrogen is attached to an electronegative element, suppose we have M. Right. M is highly electronegative. Highly electronegative. Main, mainly we have it fluorine, we can have it fluorine or nitrogen or oxygen or chlorine, etc. But mainly we define for fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen. Okay. 
because of the high electronegativity of these atoms here this attracts the bond pair of electron towards this side and after some time the bond becomes polar this atom will have delta negative charge and this atom will have delta positive charge it is very much similar to that i effect if you remember inductive effect okay this happens now suppose if you have another electronegative element suppose you have oxygen hydrogen and hydrogen it is like this delta positive delta positive and delta negative oxygen is also a highly electronegative element now when these two atoms comes closer right this electronegative atom and this hydrogen then there will be an electrostatic force of attraction because of this delta positive and delta negative charge there will be an electrostatic force of attraction this electrostatic force of attraction is hydrogen bonding copy this down hello yeah okay so hydrogen bonding first of all hydrogen involved but hydrogen must be attached to the electronegative element this must be electronegative so it is a bond electrostatic force of attraction between hydrogen and an electronegative element first of all but this hydrogen which is involved in hydrogen bonding must attached with an electronegative element understood this so this hydrogen bonding is possible in a molecule like h2o in water it is possible in nh3 it is possible in alcohol it is possible hf hydrogen chloride it is possible so there are many examples for that this happens because of the high high electronegativity of the atoms attached to the hydrogen okay if you look at the hydrogen bonding in water all these molecule you see this has delta positive delta negative delta positive charge delta positive delta negative delta positive charge then we have delta negative delta positive delta positive delta negative positive and positive delta negative positive and positive okay this kind of charge separation is there now when these atoms comes closer this oxygen and hydrogen will have an force of attraction electrostatic force of attraction this will have an force of attraction this will have an force of attraction this will have an force of attraction all these force of attraction are hydrogen so water molecules are associated like this with other molecules and hence this we also call it as an associated molecule because all the molecules are connected with a with hydrogen bonding hence it is associated it is possible with two different molecules also for example you see we have h2o right 
एंड एन एच थ्री सो नाइट्रोजन डेल्टा नेगेटिव डेल्टा पॉजिटिव राइट एंड दिस इज ऑल्सो डेल्टा पॉजिटिव सॉरी डेल्टा नेगेटिव डेल्टा पॉजिटिव डेल्टा पॉजिटिव पॉजिटिव एंड पॉजिटिव राइट सो दिस टू विल अट्रैक्ट ईच अदर दिस इज द हाइड्रोजन बॉन्ड इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक अट्रैक्ट Right, so it is possible between two different molecules. Also. More more charge density on the atom, more will be the electrostatic attraction, and stronger the hydrogen bonding is. Right. so write down as electronegativity increases as electronegativity increases charge separation increases charge separation increases and the strength of hydrogen bonding also increases Done. No, hydration is something else. Hydration is something else, Kishu. Hydration is like uh, if you dissolve sugar crystal into water, that is also hydration. There is no hydrogen bonding between sugar crystal and uh, this thing. Um, uh, what we say. water molecule means you see one thing you can understand here uh, obviously we cannot compare this with hydration because it's a different process but there will be some kind of attraction hydration process is different means we we have one concept here that we say the molecule which can form hydrogen bonding with water can dissolve in water that we can say okay but hydration process is different hydrogen bonding is different it is possible that the molecule which shows hydrogen bonding with water get hydrated in water that we can see understood okay so this is the hydrogen bonding the basic understanding you must have more charge more will be the electrostatic attraction and hence the stronger the hydrogen bond is okay now this hydrogen bonding are of two different types right next write down types of hydrogen bonding two types of hydrogen bonding we have two types the first one is intermolecular hydrogen bonding
right? If you see the name is itself suggests that this is the hydrogen bonding between the two molecule of same and different type, like H two O and NH three, for example, right? That is intermolecular hydrogen bonding. Okay, write down. This type of bonding occurs. This type of hydrogen bonding occurs when the hydrogen bond acceptor, when the hydrogen bond acceptor, and the hydrogen bond donor are present in two different molecules. Or write down this way: are present in two molecules of same or different type. Two molecules of same or different type. See, hydrogen atom acceptor is what the molecule which donates hydrogen for hydrogen bonding means from which the hydrogen is involved. Like you see this one in this particular example. this molecule is this molecule is h atom donor because its hydrogen is involved in hydrogen bonding and this molecule is h atom acceptor so when we have two different Hydrogen atom donor and acceptor molecule different or same also in H two also it is possible. This is also intermolecular hydrogen bonding, right? That is intermolecular hydrogen bonding. Write down between H two and H three. Example. Right, hydrogen bonding with this. The second type we have intramolecular. Hydrogen bonding. Right down. In this type of bonding, in this type of bonding, the hydrogen atom donor and acceptor, the hydrogen atom donor or acceptor, Donor or acceptor are present in the same molecule. Are present in the same molecule. Look at this example. We have CH three, CH double bond C H. C double bond O, O H, and this is the bond we have within the molecule. You see, this bond is H bond. Since it is within the molecule, so it is intramolecular, not intermolecular. It is intramolecular. Here also you can place any other atoms. See, see. This type of bonding is intramolecular bonding. Okay. 
okay okay this example you see if you talk about you know ortho para and meta position right this is a benzene ring and any group is attached we can have oh nh2 ch2 any group with respect to this group this position is ortho position this position is meta position and this position is para position right this is also ortho this is also meta meta right so in this uh, particular you know compound any molecule of benzene we have two ortho two meta and one para position okay two ortho two meta and one para position if you take the example of ortho nitrophenol right ortho nitrophenol so first of all phenol is this and ortho nitro means what at ortho position we have no2 attached right so at ortho we have no2 present positive negative this is ortho nitrophenol right when you talk about the para nitrophenol para nitrophenol is this oh and here we have a uh, nitro group o n double bond o okay n double bond o and here we have a single bond and positive charge this molecule is o nitrophenol o stands for ortho this is p nitrophenol p stands for para here so in ortho nitrophenol what happens we have intramolecular hydrogen bonding possible this is intra intramolecular h bonding but in para nitrophenol we don't have intramolecular hydrogen bonding but here we have intermolecular hydrogen bonding possible look at this because this cannot make a bond with hydrogen because the distance is is more over here but if you have another molecule similar molecule para nitrophenol if i place like this o and h and we have no2 here n o minus positive double bond o and these two attracts each other because of the charge separation delta positive and delta negative right so this bond is again a hydrogen bonding but it is intermolecular hydrogen bonding because it happens between the two molecules the donor and the acceptor atom are present in two different molecules where i have taken o and n ruchita acha i have oh my god is my bad guys this you corrected this you corrected my bad guys it should be like this o h right side okay so here we have delta negative delta positive delta negative delta positive delta positive and delta positive and delta positive clear
All of you are done, finished. Now, because of intermolecular hydrogen bonding, the boiling point increases. This is the property here, right? That's why the boiling point order, if I write down, for para nitrophenol, the boiling point is more than to that of ortho nitrophenol. This you must remember. Write down the heading. Properties. Ah, just a second. We have three more points in this. We'll finish it and then, and then, and then we'll take a break. I'll take max to max five minutes. Okay. Just max to max five minutes. Write down properties affected by. affected by hydrogen bonding there's three points in this that is it first one boiling point just now i said write down because of intermolecular hydrogen bonding See, hydrogen bondings are the weak bonds, okay? We don't talk about the stability because of hydrogen bonding, right? It won't affect the stability much. Okay. Right on. Because of intermolecular hydrogen bonding, the intermolecular force increases Hence, boiling point increases. And hence, the boiling point increases. Okay? This is the reason that H2O, the boiling point of H2O is more than to that of H2S. Because in this, we have intermolecular hydrogen bonding, H2S. Intermolecular hydrogen bonding, more boiling point. Same reason we have for NH3 also. More boiling point than PH3. In fact, this H2O, because of more boiling point, exists as a liquid. But this H2S exists in the gaseous form. And this question they asked in the exam also, that H2O exists as a liquid, but H2S as a gas. What is the reason? Okay. Second point, solubility in water. Right now the compounds which can form hydrogen bonding with water is soluble in water. The compound which can form hydrogen bond with water are soluble in water. Like you see, CH4, CH4, there's no electronegativity difference, can't form hydrogen bonding, is insoluble in water. But if you talk about alcohol, CH3OH, this is soluble in water. Okay, third and the last point here is viscosity. Due to hydrogen bonding, viscosity increases.
due to hydrogen bonding viscosity increases okay this is it for hydrogen bonding we'll have few more two three more points you know topics we have to discuss small small topics are there few examples we have that we'll discuss after the break okay take a break now we'll resume at 6:50 okay hello yeah shall we start guys okay see there are few you uh, know small small topics are left in this chapter okay this in is topic some we have here i guess it does connection with the previous thing that we have done so we'll consider this and the uh, miscellaneous topics of chemical bonding okay the first one we have bridge bond okay heading you write down all of you bridge bond bridge bond we have two types you just need to keep the examples in mind that is it okay when you get the question you'll understand that what you need to do here bridge bond it's just a factual question you'll get two types of bond the first one is three center three center two electron bond and the other one is three center four electron bond this we call it as a bridge bond okay these two types of bond what is three center two electron bond center means three nucleus center means here nucleus okay the first example you see of three center two electron bond and why we are calling it as three center two electron bond that you will understand with this example keep this in mind that center means nucleus we have take an example of beh2 beh2 goes under dimerization Okay, it dimerizes and forms and forms Be two H four. Dimerization means what? Two molecules combines together. That is dimerization. Okay, polymerization when we have more than two molecules combines. then it is polymerization okay now in bh2 what happens you see on dimerization we get a stable structure and that's why the dimerization possible obviously logically you cannot understand that whether the dimerization is possible or not that's why i said that it is a factual thing you have to keep this in mind that in this case the dimerization is possible and in other case it is not possible like this example you see beh2 okay so beryllium has vacant p orbital available in this bonding if you look at the bond here beh h and another molecule is this beh and h if you look at the electronic configuration of beryllium beryllium has four electrons so it has one h2 
2s2 and 2p 2p0 there is no electron in p subset right so in the excited state what we can say 2s has one and the another electron jumps into the 2p shell of this so it is vacant p orbital beryllium and these two goes under hybridization forms sp hybridized orbital and these two are the vacant orbitals so point i am trying to make is along with this bond beryllium has vacant orbital p orbital present here right vacant p orbital present so here what happens this electron pair you see the electron pair which is present in this bond and electron pair which is present in this bond this electron pair is attracted towards this beryllium goes into this vacant orbital and this is attracted towards this beryllium and that is how the dimerization takes place so this converts into this molecule beryllium at the two corner this hydrogen beryllium one beryllium one hydrogen this side one hydrogen this side and here also we have h and b this is the dimerized form of b2s6 okay now you see this forms a bridge here right this is a bridge between the two molecule that's why it is bridge bond why we are calling it as two three center two electron bond i have given here two bonds but the number of electrons are two only it means that this two electron is you know associated with the nucleus of one two two beryllium atom and one hydrogen atom means this two electron is associated with this beryllium this hydrogen and this beryllium so we have three nucleus one two and three and two electrons so it is three center and two electron bond understood right so this bond is the bridge bond we have three center three center means three nucleus two for beryllium one for hydrogen right this bond is the terminal bond right and this bond here this we call it as three center two electron bond yes done guys three center because we have three nucleus right and the two electron which was present here between this beryllium and hydrogen now in this dimerized form this two electron is associated with the two beryllium atom and one hydrogen atom this three atom that's why we have three center three center means three nucleus and two electrons clear so you have to memorize this that in b uh, in b h2 we have three center two electron bond Yeah. 
Yeah, I said no. So that, see what happens. Uh, beryllium BES2 molecule is this. Now in this bonding state with two hydrogen atom, beryllium has vacant orbital available. Hence, it can accept the electron. Right? Correct. So this pair of electron, in order to get dimerized, this pair of electron is now associated with like we can say it donates to this orbital or it is you know associated with this nucleus this hydrogen and this nucleus three nucleus we have and we get a bridge bond like this it acts as a bridge between the two molecules that's why the bond is bridge bond and it has three nucleus one two and three three nucleus so three center and since this two electron is you know distributed among the three atoms hence it is three center two electron bond even this bond is also three center two electron bond. Yes, you are right, Gayatri. This bond is also three center two electron bond. You have to keep this in mind that in BE2H4, we have a bridge bond that is three center two electron. Yeah. Okay. The another important example for this one. And in fact, this one is more important, is for BH3. BH3 get dimerizes. And converts into B2H6. Right? B2H6, diborane. B2H6 is diborane. Right, if you look at the bonding in BH3, Electronic configuration of boron has five electron, 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. So in excited state, you see it must have three unpaired electron in order to make a bond with hydrogen. So excited state, you see one orbital is vacant here. So this one, boron has one vacant orbital. In fact, you can keep this in mind. Boron, whenever bonded with three bonds, it has one vacant orbital. And that's why this electron pair you see, which is present here, it is associated with this boron atom and this electron pair also associated with this boron atom. And hence this two dimerizes and it converts into DH, DH, D, hydrogen and hydrogen, hydrogen and hydrogen. This bond is three center two electron bond. Okay, so we have two three center two electrons. This is bridge bond. And this is terminal bond. Terminal bond. We also call it as this one, we also call it as banana bond. Because this one, it looks like banana. That's why it is nothing else, right? And we have similar thing this side also, right? So it looks like banana, hence we call it as banana bond. There are few properties uh, on which they ask question in exam, and that you should remember. And the first property is what of this? That is the bridge, the bond length. If you see. If you take the bridge bond, boron hydrogen, the bond length of bridge bond is more than to that of terminal BH bond. Right? If you talk about bond strength, usually bond length and bond strength are opposite. But here still, the bond strength is more for 
bridge bond however its length is more than terminal bh there is no mistake here this two orders are correct bond length and bond strength usually it is inversely proportional but here the same order we do not have because the two electrons are you know distributed among three centers three nucleus that's why we have greater attraction and hence the bond strength of bridge bond is more than to that of terminal bond no it's not we have two electrons only where where we have the four electrons is three center two electron okay so these two property related to the bond length and bond strength you must remember okay then guys tell me yes so another type of bridge bond we have the second type that is three center four electron bond we have two examples in this the first one is becl2 in becl2 if you look at the structure beryllium attached with one chlorine again beryllium has vacant orbital i am not going to draw the electronic configuration again we have discussed it in beh2 similar you know configuration we have here chlorine has three lone pairs on it and we know beryllium has vacant p orbital that we have discussed already so what happens this uh, chlorine donates its lone pair into the vacant orbital of this beryllium and hence we get a bridge bond here which is this becl be cl cl and cl here so one bond pair will have here which is present as it is another one is of chlorine and chlorine has two lone pair here another one is of chlorine this one you see 1 2 3 center 2 plus 2 four electron that's why this bridge bond is three center four electron all these dimerization processes are a uh, spontaneous process okay the molecule get dimerized on its own in order to gain the stability okay done one more example in this we have icl3 which dimerizes as i2cl6 okay why this happens is that you see here when you look at this icl3 you can find out its geometry and uh, you know hybridization you'll get sp3d this is tbt trigonal bipyramidal it has three bond pair and two lone pair the hybridization is sp3d icl3 now because of its hybridization the structure of icl3 is this chlorine here chlorine here chlorine here at this corner we have one lone pair at this corner we have another lone pair so this is the bonding we have trigonal bipyramid okay this is a lone pair of electron lone pair and lone pair okay so here we have lone pair lone pair repulsion at this uh, you know equatorial position now when it dimerizes shows three centered 
uh, you know, four electron bond, it dimerizes and the structure will go like this. Sorry, I C L I and the two lone pair it is present over here. Now you see the two lone pair are placed at 180 degree to each other, and hence the repulsion reduces and hence the stability increases. In fact, this all these chlorine are going into the plane. All these are dotted line into the plane. And these chlorine atoms are coming out of the plane. This is the structure we have. And most importantly is what? That these two lone pair now at 180 degree maximum distance and hence the stability increases. And that's why it gets dimerizes. Right, so ICL3 converts into I2Cl6, BCL2 converts into B2Cl4, three centered four electron bond. Okay, now the next one is back bonding. See the back bonding, we have two types of back bonding. The first one is P pi, P pi back bonding. You write it down, this P pi, P pi back bonding. I'll explain why it is called P pi, P pi back bonding. You'll understand it, okay? First, we'll see this example here. P pi, P pi back bonding is what? Suppose we have a molecule. We have a huge application of this, right? Uh, BF3 molecule, suppose we have. So BF3 molecule, you see, boron is bonded with 3-fluorine, trigonal planar structure we have. And in this bonding state, the boron has one vacant orbital that we know already. And each fluorine atom has three lone baron. Boron has only six electron. You see, this is the six electron has boron has. Okay, so because of this electron deficient atom boron is. So what happens? Any fluorine, because all fluorine, all are the fluorine atoms only. Any of this fluorine atom donates its lone pair of electron to the vacant orbital of boron. What is the benefit of it? The benefit is boron has six electron only in this state. When this, when this fluorine atom donates its electron, it has eight electrons, so it's octet complete, right? So this is what the back bonding is. So what is happening here, you see, the boron and fluorine. Boron has vacant p orbital. Fluorine has lone pair present in p orbital. And this side we have again two fluorine atom present. It is possible with any one of the fluorine atom. 
because all has the same uh, you know size and same shape so this lone pair it donates into the vacant orbital of boron and hence the octet of boron is complete right so what happens here this is p orbital this is p orbital so it is p p overlap you can say p p overlap the bond that forms here this bond has pi characteristics because this already has a sigma bond right internuclear axis this is lateral overlapping so pi characteristics hence we call it as p pi p pi why back bonding because sigma bond has already been formed and then this bond is forming right that's why it is p pi p pi back bond understood tell me guys it's clear so p pi p pi back bonding is possible when the two atoms belongs to the second period this is also belongs to the second period this is also belongs to the second period mostly mostly it happens in this case only back bonding it calls because one bond has already been formed one sigma bond then fluorine is forming a bond again after formation of a sigma bond fluorine is donating the molecule has been formed and then the fluorine is donating its electron back to boron means when you just draw the lewis dot structure will give electrons to fluorine fluorine donates its electron to boron that's why it is back bonding it forms after the formation of a sigma bond after the molecule has been formed that's why it is back bonding clear right so in this what happens you see the electron deficiency right down this point the electron deficiency of boron atom decreases due to back bonding the electron deficiency of boron atom decreases due to back bonding next line as back bonding tendency increases electron deficiency decreases right so if you look at this molecule one question they ask here that compare the uh due to back bonding the electron deficiency of boron decreases as the back bonding tendency increases yeah this one line i said na no? uh, one second uh, due to back bonding the electron deficiency of boron decreases ha huh. more back bonding or more tendency of back bonding lesser will be the electron deficiency more tendency of back bonding lesser will be the tendency of electron deficiency lesser tendency of Let's look at the electron deficiency. Okay, compare the Lewis acidity. Very important question. Compare the Lewis acidity of BF three, BCl three, BBr three, and Bi three. See, Lewis acidity is what Lewis acidity is the tendency to accept electron. Lewis acids are those compounds 
those compounds which has tendency to to accept a pair of electron right pair of electron now all these boron are electron deficient okay so because of back bonding what happens the electron deficiency decreases electron deficiency decreases then the molecule has less tendency to accept electron and its lewis and its lewis acidity decreases correct so if you look at this three molecule here okay in bf3 the boron has 2p orbital fluorine has 2p orbital means 2p 2p overlap we have here here we have 2p 3p overlap 2p for boron 4p for bromine 2p for boron and 5p for iodine what do you mean by this see when the orbital size is comparable then the overlap is easy and it's, the extent of overlapping is maximum here but when the orbital size is not comparable suppose this 2p 2p overlap here suppose we have 2p 3p overlap is something like this right so here the overlapping tendency is less because the size difference 2p 4p again the size difference is large right so it is 2p 3p it is 2p 4p so as the size difference increases right then the overlapping tendency decreases hence in bf3 molecule we have maximum tendency to overlap and forms the back bonding right so back bonding tendency is maximum in bf3 and minimum in bi3 that's why the lewis acidic behavior for these molecules is nothing but the tendency to accept electron bi3 is the most electron deficient molecule hence the order is this lewis acidic behavior yes did you understand this more uh, you know back bonding uh, okay okay fine fine no problem see i'll explain this again one second see actually all these molecules have similar kind of bonding for example bf3 i'm writing it down okay bf3 is this and boron has vacant orbital when it has vacant orbital so it behaves as lewis acid behaves as lewis acid why because since the vacant orbital is present so it has tendency to accept electron if some if, if you know if you donate electron pair to this it it can accommodate the electron pair into this vacant orbital that's why it is lewis acid so if it is electron deficient it has more tendency to accept electron but the electron deficiency decreases because of back bonding okay so fluorine what it does fluorine has the pair of electron lone pair right so since the orbital size is also comparable so it donates its electron to the vacant orbital of boron since it accepts electron from fluorine so boron has less tendency to accept electron from any other molecule means its lewis acidity its lewis acidity decreases because of back bonding can we say that all of you respond because of back bonding can you say that tell me and what kind of back bonding is this p pi p pi back bonding right yes so more the tendency to form a back bond 
lesser you know the behavior of this molecule right the lewis acidic behavior is lesser we can say right so if you look at bcl3 bcl3 is this this also has similar kind of bonding but the only difference is the p orbital of boron and chlorine we have a difference in size because this is 2p and this is 3p so more the size difference lesser will be the tendency for back bonding hence what we can say the back bonding tendency p pi p pi back bonding tendency is maximum in bf3 and minimum in bi3 would you agree with me on this p pi p pi back bonding tendency is maximum in bf3 and minimum in bi3 yes is it clear respond guys all of you right so maximum back bonding means minimum tendency to accept electron its lewis acidity decreases that's why i said that bf3 shows maximum back bonding so its lewis acidity is minimum and bi3 shows minimum back bonding tendency its lewis acidity is maximum so bf3 then we have bcl3 then we have bbr3 and then we have bit this is a lewis acidic nature for the trihalides of boron clear yes one important thing this order i have given according to this p pi p pi back bonding must take care of that right if you simply think of electronegativity then you can say sir fluorine is the most electronegative atom so it has the maximum tendency to accept electron but that is not the case here we cannot take the the factor as electronegativity electronegativity is not the factor here not the major factor we can say the major factor is p pi p pi back bonding so according to electronegativity if you write down the order the order will be exactly opposite right according to p pi p pi the order is this so which factor dominates when according to that only will write down the answer so here you have to keep in mind in case of b f3 bcl3 means boron trihalide molecule p pi p pi back bonding is dominating all other factors and hence the lewis acidic behavior is this any doubt correct so fine guys so we have another type of back bonding here which we call it as p pi d pi back bonding okay and then we have odd electron molecules yes 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 acidity lewis acidity not acidity i am talking about lewis acidity here chatta okay because the definition of lewis acid is what the molecule which has the tendency to accept a pair of electron is called lewis acid right so bi3 is the most strong lewis acid bf3 is the least strong lewis acid here. or the weakest lewis acid is bf3 strongest one is bi3 clear any doubt yeah so guys next we have to start with p pi d pi and then odd electron bond okay i won't start it today we don't have time otherwise i have to leave it in in, in between okay so we'll do this in next class half an hour mostly i'll take uh, and then we'll finish off finish it off and then we'll start with gases state okay i have gone a bit fast today okay so i request all of you to revise the entire session once okay because we had to cover a lot since last class we missed right that's why i have gone a bit fast so all of you revise your notes if you want i will share the you know videos also with you later on okay anything else
Okay, guys. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.